It's not time to be ashamed of the Lord. It's not time to be ashamed to be a one God. Amen. Jesus' name. Tongue talker. Holy roller. Amen. I'll shout. Amen. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the God that I serve. I know where he brought me from. It, it truly bless my soul to hear Brother Darrell share briefly remarks after Sunday school and to know where God has brought them to from. Amen. Don't tell me what God cannot do. He can clean you up. Turn you around. Put your feet on a solid ground. Be your mind to want to live for him. And some people just need to be baptized with a mind to want to live for God. Amen. If you're here today and you haven't made up your mind whether you're going to live for God, you need to make up your mind today. Yeah, I'm going to live for God. Amen. Despite what the world is doing, I am going to live for God. Anybody made up your mind to live for God? Amen. I'm excited today to share the word of the Lord with you. If you have your Bibles, would like to direct your attention to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Amen. Why don't you stand for the reading of the Word of God? Acts chapter 2. Verses 1 through 4. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as the fire. And it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me ask you a question here for a moment before we pray. Anyone remember the day when you had that experience? I mean, do you really remember that day? Do you remember the day? Do you remember the month? Do you remember the year? I don't know about you. I remember the day, the month, the year, the location. Yes, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Glory. And I began to speak with other tongues. I'm so glad that I can base my salvation on the Bible. Yes, Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the word of God. The power of God. I pray that, Lord, for the next few moments, you would pull the rain upon every heart, every mind. God, we would focus upon your word and let the word of God speak to us. I pray and take dominion and authority in this atmosphere. In the power of the spirit of God and the authority of the word of God. We are thankful, grateful for what you're going to do. We're grateful for the souls you're going to save in this service. The bodies and lives and minds you're going to heal. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. A great book that we read from this morning. Anybody love the book of Acts? Yes. Amen. We, we are apostolic. Amen. This is an apostolic church. We are a oneness people. We believe in, believe in hero Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord. We believe in one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And uh, I love this truth. Amen. It changed my life. Yes. Amen. The word of God can change your life if you let it. Amen. But if you look still in these verses, I want to go down to verse 37. 
The Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call and with many of the words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Yeah. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. That's revival. Yeah. Yeah. That in one setting, one message being preached, 3,000 people heard it and said, I want to be baptized. Amen. Oh, I like to hear that. Amen. I like to see that. Amen. I get excited just seeing one. Amen. And I'm praying there come a day that we will see five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, thirty people in one setting. God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to begin by saying this morning that I think most of us understand and know if you lived any length of time, you know that we live in an age when, when people want to be told that everything is going to be all right. It's true. But the truth is, the truth is, some things are not going to be all right. Unless a change is made. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verse 37 verse 38 we see how God mightily used the apostle Peter to address the unbelievers on the day of Pentecost. And with no nonsense, unapologetic and a direct approach on the day of Pentecost Peter preached the gospel with power. When the unsaved crowd that heard Peter preach with such power, their hearts were sliced open wide uh -huh. by the truth. The word will cut you. Right. Mm. Yeah. The word will deal with you. Yeah. Yeah. When Peter preached that day, I mean the word cut their hearts wide open uh -huh. to the point they were convicted. They were pricked. They cried out, men and brethren, what shall we do? Mm, the word speaks to us. It's dealing with us. We realize the man that we have crucified was both Lord and Christ. We understand this man's blood is now on our hands. We've made a big mistake. And they're pricked. The heart sliced open. We say, man and brother, what shall we do? And Peter responded and told them, and the, the, the necessary steps that were required for them to get things right with God. Yes, In other words, that's what we're saying. We got to get right with God. Yes, you know, there was a day when people would, would, would speak like that, talk like, I got to get right with God. Right. Right. Amen. I got to get right with God. Right. I got to get my house right with God. Yeah. I got to get my life right with God. I got to get my marriage right with God. Yeah. Amen. And then Peter, when they asked, what must we do? He told them boldly, repent. Repent. And as Peter said on that day, I still say today, if a person wants to get right with God, they have to repent. You you can't you you can bypass and go around some things, but to get right with God, you gotta follow principles. Mm -hmm. You gotta follow principles. And if you're gonna get right with God, you have to repent. And so my subject today on this Sunday morning is simply the question, what is repentance? What is repentance? What does it actually mean to 
repent. I've come to understand that a large number of people today, even in the church today, have no knowledge, have no understanding of what true repentance is or why it is so foundational and necessary to their Christian walk and relationship with God. In a recent survey, a recent national survey, churchgoers were asked to articulate what the word repentance means or meant to them. The survey resulted in an assortment of answers. The majority of those who participated in the survey stated that they believed the word repentance meant one or more of the following, quote, to feel sorry, about something one did or failed to do. To feel remorseful about some act and to ask for forgiveness for it. Others said it means to walk forward in a church service to formally ask Jesus into one's life. You know that the word repentance is a very important and powerful New Testament word. The first instances where the word repentance is used is in the New Testament. It is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Both used by John the Baptist and Jesus respectfully. They spoke and used the word repent. John said in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John's ministry was literally launched with one word. His ministry was about one word. When John preached, he preached on repent. Jesus too began his public ministry by beckoning his listeners who came around to want to listen to him. He begged them to repent. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Jesus commenced his public ministry, and it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Like John the Baptist, Jesus also knew that the only way, the only way to enter into the kingdom of God and to be saved was through repentance. And I want to say in this hour, when there is so much confusion about what it means to be saved, Jesus let it be known, John let it be known, that the only way to enter into the kingdom of God and be saved is through repentance. You see, John said it, Jesus said it, but Jesus also elaborated a little more in Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, verse 3 and verse 5. Jesus said, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He said, if you don't repent, you are going to perish. And the only way to be saved, to have any Ideal or even think about entering into the kingdom of God, you're going to have to repent. Then in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter launched his preaching ministry. Notice John launched his ministry with the word repent. Jesus launched his ministry with the word repent. Now, after Jesus left his disciples to finish what he started, Peter in Acts chapter 2 launches his ministry. With the same requirements of repentance. And just as John the Baptist and Jesus has called men to repent, Peter also told his audience. In Acts chapter 2 verse 38, 
I find it interesting. John said repent. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus said repent. Yeah. Yeah. Now Peter telling the people to repent. Yeah. How is it in this day and hour people telling people you can go to heaven but you don't have to repent? You can give all the money you want to give but if you don't repent, you in trouble. So I'll pay my way in. No, you can't pay your way in. I buy pure too. You, you can buy all the pews you want. Amen. The message in this hour is repent. The apostle Peter understood that repentance is the birth canal through which people enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, repentance is the only way. It's the step into the only way to be saved. Repentance is the only way to be delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Repentance is the only way to emerge spiritually, be reborn, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. People say, I want the Holy Ghost. Well, if you want the Holy Ghost, you'll never get the Holy Ghost until you repent. Because God's not going to fill a dirty vessel with his Holy Spirit with his power and anointing until that vessel repents and say, God, I need you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Amen. I've never seen anybody ever receive the Holy Ghost and nobody ever will receive the Holy Ghost except they repent. Amen. Amen. The word repent that we see here used by John the Baptist. We see here used by Jesus, this word repent, we see used by Peter. It comes from a Greek word. This Greek word is metanaio. And this particular word, metanaio, where we get the English word repent. This Greek word, metanaio, it is a compound of the words meta, naio. The word meta means to turn. The word naio refers to the mind. And when these two words are compounded, the new word describes in its most basic sense a change of mind or a complete conversion. Mm. This word metanaio, amen. This word that, that we hear Jesus speaks, this word that John uses, this word Amen. That Peter uses repent. This Greek word metanoia, it reflects a turn, a change of direction. That's what it means. It, it means a, a, a new course and a completely altered behavior and view of life. Mm. That's what it, I'm talking about. What is repentance? Then this word metanoia, it is used to denote a complete radical and total change. Mm. When one really repents, there's a radical change. Uh, there's a complete makeover. Mm. It, it means a decision. Anybody ready to make a decision? It, it means to make a decision to completely change one's thoughts, behavior, and actions or to entirely turn around in the way one is thinking, believing, and living. When you talk about really repenting, you saying, I really want to change the way I think. I, I want to change the way I live. I want to change the way I believe. Amen. I'm talking about a radical change. Mm. Amen. My, it is metanoia. Amen. It's more than what we think about. Amen. Amen. This word repent in the New Testament gives the image of a person changing from top to bottom. It talks about a total transformation, wholly affecting every part of a person's life. When one really repents, it's going to affect you from the top to the bottom of your life. Yes, when you really repent, it's going to affect you from the top to the bottom. Amen. There's going to be a change that's going to happen all over you. Amen. 
I said that, that, that's, that's what's going to happen. You're going to change the way you think, the way you live, the way you talk. Amen. I'm talking about a radical change. That when people that used to know you will look at you and say, what happened to you? What happened to you? You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't dress like the way you dress. You don't even do the things that you used to do. Amen. Don't talk about you repented and you still doing stuff you used to do 10 years ago. Something wrong. And it ain't the word and it ain't God. It's probably you. Amen. 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 Repentance is a heartful quality decision to change. And we all must repent to begin our relationship with God. There can never be a real, intimate, personal relationship with God except one come through the birth canal of repentance. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something about this, this powerful thing called repentance. is when the Lord opens your eyes to those things that are displeasing him or displeasing to him. Amen. Amen. And, and you are willing and open to, to, to obey what he's talking to you about in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. How do you, get, how do you repent? You are now a candidate to be baptized. Don't even think about going to get baptized if you haven't repented. See, there's a lot of people that went to the watery grave of baptism and was baptized and never repented. You see, baptism without repentance is like going, turning on the water hose, playing in the water. Wow. Jumping in the swimming pool. This is, you just got wet. I'm being honest. To make baptism effective, you gotta first repent. That's why Jesus, amen, said repent. That's why John said repent. That's now when Peter, amen, on the day of Pentecost, when all of the men, all the people said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said repent. And on top of that, in other words, don't stop there. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall if you do it the right way. See, a lot of people are doing things for God, but they're not doing it the right way. They're doing it their way. Amen. My way. My. We, got all, we got too many people called up in my way. My, my, my way. My way. They need to call up in Yahweh. Doing it his way. Right. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. 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 And some people say, oh, I'd rather believe Jesus, though, than Peter. Because Jesus said, be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. I'm not downplaying the words of Jesus, but see, a lot of people don't understand what he meant when he said that. Because if what Peter said on the day of Pentecost was wrong, one of them other 11 would have came up behind Peter and pulled his coattail like some preachers do when folk messing up in the pulpit. The bishop would come by and pull the coattail and say, you, you need to sit down because you messing up right now. But, but Peter knew what he was talking about because if Peter was wrong and, 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 and he was not following what Jesus told him to do, because you know, if you read the Bible in Matthew, go to Matthew 28, 19, you know the Bible said Jesus said, go ye into all the world. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. This is Jesus talking, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus told his disciples. This is what I want you to go do. But you notice nowhere in the scriptures, nowhere in the Bible, do you ever see, will you never find where one of Jesus' disciples ever baptized anyone that way? Because they understood what Jesus was talking about. Matter of fact, go to Luke chapter 24. Go down to verse, I think, 45, 46, 47, somewhere. Get Luke 24. See, see, Jesus, after he made that statement in Matthew, we get to Luke, he had to open their understanding. Verse 45, Luke 49, verse 45. 
four, yeah, Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Now notice this. Then open he their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. He said, now I got to open your understanding. Because I've said some things you might be scratching your head trying to figure out what did I really mean. So I'm getting ready to open your understanding so you might understand the scriptures. Look at the next verse. And he said unto them, thus it is written and thus behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Look at verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now, did you get this? Jesus said, I got to open your understanding, first of all, that you understand the scripture. That repentance and remission of sins. How do you get remission of sins? Jesus, uh, Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. You get remission of sin when you get baptized. And so Jesus told in Matthew 28, 19, go ye teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Notice in the English teachers here, the word name is in singular possessive. Name means one. He did not say in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. He didn't say in the name he said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. When you say, well, what's the name of the Father? Get Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 on the screen. You want to know the name of the Father? Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Who are we talking about? Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name. Not his name, but his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Jesus is called who? The Mighty God. Watch this. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So when Jesus said baptizing in the name of the Father, we know what the name of the Father is. It's Jesus. He said, what's the name of the Son? Jesus. Unto us is given a, a child is born. His name shall be called Jesus. When Jesus was getting ready to leave, they got a little concerned. He said, I, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. The Father will send the comforter in my name. So when Jesus said to them disciples, baptize in the name, Father, so the then he, and that's in Matthew. Then he go over Luke. He said, I'm hoping you understand now that you understand the scriptures. I want you to really understand because I'm getting ready to leave and I want you to finish what I started. And I need you to understand what I meant when I said what I said in Matthew. So when he told them, when Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, if Peter was wrong, one of the other 11 would said, now, Peter, you know, Jesus didn't tell us that. But they were all in agreement because they understood what Jesus meant. That's why the Bible says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in him. When I see Jesus, I see the Father. When I see Jesus, I see the Son. When I see Jesus, I see the Holy Ghost. Jesus. You see, we've been, been deceived. People have been deceived. They, they think about when they get to heaven, they're going to see the Father on the throne, a Son on the throne, and the Holy Ghost on the throne. Do you know there ain't but one throne up in heaven? And ain't but one person sitting on that throne. It's God Almighty. God is a spirit. But let me understand that. God is a spirit. No man has seen God at any time. But see, God knew I got to redeem mankind. I got to save mankind. And the only way I'm going to redeem mankind and save mankind, I got to die and shed blood. But I'm a spirit. A spirit don't have a body. I got to get in a body to legally shed blood. So
to a God in creation saying, I'm the father of creation. Then in redemption, he said, I'm going to come down as a son to redeem mankind. But then he said, I'm not going to leave him comfortless. I'm going to send my spirit as the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And you say, well, I still don't get it. Let me show you like this. This is my son. Amen. I'm his father at home. Hallelujah. We come to church. He still know I'm his daddy. But then he honors me as his pastor. Amen. I'm not two people. I'm, I'm his father and I'm his pastor. But just say I just took a job now and I'm, I'm, I'm working at CPC with him. And I, I'm now a professor there. And he wants to further his education. And he happened to come in my classroom. At home, he see me as his father. At, at, at church, he see me as his, as, as his pastor. But if he come in my class, he now see me as the teacher. Am I three people? No, I'm one. Hallelujah. I'm the father at home, the pastor at church, and the teacher in the classroom. Now, if I give him a check, and I say, son, I'm getting ready to give you a blank check, and it's going to be for a substantial amount of money, I'm going to put my name on it, and I want you to get to the store and buy what you need. If I sign that check, what I am, and I put on the signature line, pastor, father, teacher, get to the store and do what you need to do. No store. We'll cash that check. That's right. Because th those are titles that I have. That's not my name. But if I put my name on the check, Damon Inman PV Senior, he can go through a whole lot of stuff with that check. And see, the point I'm trying to make is, see, God was a spirit. No man has seen God at any time. But God has held various different offices. In creation, he was the Father. Same God. Mankind fell into sin. He said, now I'm going to operate in the office of the Son. I'm going to incarnate myself in a body so I can legally be born, legally grow up, legally now have a body to legally share blood. Because the Bible said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That's why in the Old Testament, they always kept bringing all those animal sacrifices. But the animal sacrifices could not wash away their sins. The only blood that can wash away sin was the blood of Jesus. That's why God had to get a body. He said, I gotta legally get myself in a body so I can legally shed blood, so I can legally redeem mankind. So Father in creation, Son of Father of his creation, Son of his in redemption. Now he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but the Father going to send the comfort in my name. Now I'm going to come back in the form and the office of the Holy Ghost. Are we talking about three? No, it's one. That's why the Jews so adamantly believe, hear, O oh Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. of the Godhead is all in him. And if you've been baptized any other way, then in the name of Jesus Christ, I hate to disappoint you. I'm not trying to be rude, but I've got to tell you the truth. If you've been baptized any other way, check the Bible. Hallelujah. Nowhere in the scriptures will you ever find, nowhere do you find any one of Jesus' disciples ever baptizing anybody other than in the name of Jesus. I told a guy when I was in the Navy, he was so adamant telling people, you don't have to be baptized in Jesus' name. You don't have to. You need to follow Jesus. And I mean, he was a thorn in my flesh. He was telling every convert I was trying to reach, don't listen to Petty Officer Peavy. The doctrines he teaching, those are not doctrines of God. Those are doctrines of the devil. That, that teaching is not of God. Don't believe Petty Officer Peavy. He was telling people, don't go down in the, in the well that, to that Bible study. Don't go down in that apostolic Bible study. Them people lying. Petty Officer Peavy lying. He not telling the truth. He got to be a thorn in my flesh. Every time we would see each other, let's have a Bible study, Petty Officer Peavy. I said, listen, my mind made up. Your mind made up. You believe what you want to believe. I already know what I'm going to believe. We can talk about the water. We can talk about this boat. We can talk about the next port we get ready to pull in. But we ain't got to talk about God because you, 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 you need a revelation. And I I told that guy, I said, listen, I will give you a thousand dollars. 
If you show me one scripture in the Bible where anybody ever was baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus, and the moment you come show me one scripture, don't come tell me about no book. Don't come tell me about what some bishop said. You show me in the book where one person was ever baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus. I'll give you a thousand dollars. He never came. But let me tell you how God will work. Right before we was getting ready to pull in off that six month deployment. See, see, I, I, I turned them over to prayer. Right. See, I learned some people, I, I just turned them over to prayer. Right. I turned them over to prayer. And I never forget one day, we was down in our little spot having our Bible studies. And down the steps come <laughs> this gentleman. And I thought, not now, Lord. I do not want to deal with this guy now. He come down the steps, had a humble look on his face. He said, I, if I could just take a moment, I'd like to say something. First of all, I, I come down here, first of all, to apologize. Yeah. I want to apologize. He said, first of all, I'm apologizing because everything I've been fighting against, God revealed to me, it is the truth. And I need to accept it and obey it. He come down weeping and crying. He said, God been dealing with me for the last three days. He said, I couldn't sleep. God woke me up in a vision and showed me what you fighting against is what you need to accept. He said, I know we get ready to pull in the port. I need to find out where when we pull in, where is a church I can go to? Because I know the church I'm going to, they're not going to baptize me in Jesus' name. Tell me a church I can go to. As a matter of fact, I want it to be an apostolic church that I can go to get my sins washed away and get baptized in Jesus' name. That guy come down there eating humble pie. Amen. Confessed that I was wrong. Amen. And we pulled in port, told him where to go. The guy got baptized in Jesus' name, got filled with the Holy Ghost. But it starts with repentance. I go back to what I was talking about. There's no, there's no need to get baptized if you haven't repented. But once you repent, you're ready to get baptized. That's right. And as you grow in your walk with God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God will continue to reveal things in your life that need to be changed. That's what the Holy Ghost will do. Amen. And then when God starts opening your eyes to those things that are displeasing to him, it's time then that you are being willing and will obey and repent. Amen. So when you get the Holy Ghost and empty yourself, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. It will start dealing with you. Right, sir. About stuff in your life right. that is displeasing to God. Right. Sometimes he'll come in that still small voice. Right. Sometimes he'll wake you up at that midnight hour and you broke out and sweat and you woke up from this dream like, oh my God, did, did you hear that, baby? Right. What are you talking about? I heard this voice speak to me. Mm -hmm. God will deal with you that's right. about stuff in that's what the Spirit of God will do. Then the Bible said the Spirit of God will lead you and guide you into all truth. You see, what happens is the Spirit of God starts dealing with about dealing with us about stuff in our life that's displeasing to Him, and we want to turn it off. Right, right, right. Come on. We want to turn that volume down. I don't want to hear that right now. But when He opens your eyes and start dealing with you, you need to just repent. Amen. We, we got to be willing to make an intelligent decision to adjust our thinking and behavior to conform to God's ways and his biblical principles. And I just come this morning, I'm, I'm about done, to give you the word of the Lord he's given to me. Amen. To encourage you this morning. Yes. To willingly come to the altar. Set aside time in your life to commune with the Spirit of God about those personal matters that God may be dealing with you about. When Daryl said this morning was so timely, God, amen, he said there was stuff I was saying that he thought I was up all in his house. That's what God will do at times. But then there will be time God will be dealing with you about stuff I may never say something about. Amen. 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 And, and like he said, you be looking, well, well God, why ain't you telling him to do it? God telling you to do it, you, you don't worry about what God may be telling somebody else to do. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God will deal with you. Yes. 
And we got to stay in this hour we live in, in this, this, this climate that we live in. We need to stay as sensitive to the spirit of God as we possibly can. It is not time to get callous and cold, backslidden in mind, backslidden in heart, that when the spirit of God begins to deal with you about something you need to repent of. Amen. Because we see without repentance, Jesus said you will perish. I mean, we, we, we need to get in a place where we give God permission to take you on a personal tour behind the back doors of the rooms of your life. Say, God, I want you to take me on a tour of my life. God, I'm giving you permission, God, to go in every crevice and corner and closet of my life. And there's stuff there, God, that need to be changed. God, I, I want you to tell me about it because I'm willing to make the change. Amen. Amen. I didn't grow up in church. I come from the dope house to the church house. But when you get this Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God will deal with you about stuff in your life. Amen. And the devil will try to make you think it's like he said, rules and regulation. No, it's the Spirit of God trying to set some parameters. Some fences. That your flesh don't get out of control. Yes. Amen. What kind of fences do you got up in your life? Do you got any kind of fences up in your life that you have said, this line, I'm not crossing. My flesh, oh no, devil, I'm not going over there. I used to be over there, but I'm not going over there. Some lines, some fences, you need to just, amen, pull as far away back from the world as you possibly can. You see, some of us, we want to live on the edge of the fence. I want to live as close to the world as I possibly can. Ah, but you can't live that close to the world. Hallelujah, without sometimes slipping over back into the world. Amen. But when you get this Holy Ghost, it will convict you. The word. That's why some people's flesh don't want to come to church because they know that word be like when Peter preached. It'll slice their heart open. <laughs> I'm raw in Oh, he will expose you. Then you be gone. And, and I know people think this all the time. All the time. My wife may say something in a, in, a, in a setting, a lady service somewhere, or talking to somebody, and then I get up and say something. First lady must have talked to Pat. Wait, my wife will tell you. When I'm in a zone, I'm in a zone. I mean, I'm just, you know, she probably can't get a word out of me when it comes to the things of God. And, and then I'll come to church and say something, and somebody say, who told the pastor? <laughs> Why not just look at it like nobody told the pastor? God just dialed my phone number. God, I, I thought I had caller ID and nobody knew my number. I got some friends of mine that called me and, know, and, and I know, I don't even have to, I, well, there's certain numbers calling, they say, no, I already know who it is. Doesn't know their number. See, you, you think you got your number blocked. You, you, you think you, nobody knows what's going on. You, you, you think you got them little closets and them back door, back door, back door, back door spaces. Nobody knows about it. God said, I'm, I, I've been watching you. I'm going to call your number right now. I'm going to speak to the man of God to deal with you. Amen. Amen. Not to hurt you, to punish you, but for you to get right with me. Amen. And when God starts dealing with you, the best thing to do is repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Because the Bible says in 1 John, if we confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some people want to walk, walk around and, and not confess your sins to God. If we don't confess, it, it, it will hinder your walk with God, your relationship with God. Amen. And if, you, if we're not careful, it might hinder our opportunity to make heaven a home. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I don't want to stand before God on that day and, and, and not have brought things and put them on the altar and got it under the blood and got it right with God. Amen. But uh, understand what repentance is. It, it, it's an it's a, it's a intellectual decision to change things about how you think, you live, your behavior. 
One one definition said it, it's a it's a radical makeover from top to bottom. You you really ready for God to work on you from top to bottom? I want God to work on me from top to bottom. Amen. Some people say I want Him to work on me, but I just want to work on my right hand. That's it. <laughs> work on my right hand, God. All this other stuff, let me deal with this, Lord. This is me, Lord. In fact, deal with my pinky, but don't deal with nothing else. God said, if you want me to work on you, I will work on you from the top to the bottom. Right. Nice. Amen. Amen. Are you really, really ready? Do you want God to work on you from top to bottom? Amen. Let's understand. And as Christians who are serious about their walk with God. Is anybody really serious about their walk with God? I mean serious about your walk with God. Now, I like to have fun. I like to laugh and enjoy myself. Some people get around me and my wife and they be thinking, man, y'all, do they have fun? And then they get around us and they say, man, y'all really down to earth people. I didn't know y'all was this fun to be around. But there's some things I'm serious about. Amen. Amen. Really serious Amen. about. That's my walk with God. Amen. I'm serious about my walk with God. Amen. Amen. And we must be willing, if we're saying we're serious about our walk with God, we got to be serious and be willing to repent. Amen. Every time we've done something out of character, Amen. out of character Amen. of those who represent Jesus Christ. Maybe today you came into this service and God already been dealing with you about some stuff in your life. That maybe he's been dealing with you about. He's just saying, listen, all I need you to do is repent. I want you to lift your hands right where you're at for a moment. The Spirit of God is moving here. There's revelation of oneness. There's revelation of the foundational principles of repentance. Jesus said, I say nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Oh, come on, in the name of Jesus, we're going to open the altar for a moment of prayer. Maybe the Lord's been dealing with you. Maybe it's been this week, this month. Maybe there's just some things that you just say, Lord, I just I, I just want to make, make sure things are right, God, with me and you, Lord. I don't want nothing, God, in closets and behind doors, God, that's going to hinder me, Lord. Jesus, maybe you've never repented. My, my, why, why not let this be your opportunity to come and repent? Oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, in the name of Jesus.